We're recording. All right, so um, I said I'll just let it be an open discussion if you just want to tell us yeah, sure from thing. the beginning kind of what happened. Um, so he kind of had the ability to hand select this platoon, and he always had the ability to kind of finagle his way into situations and get away with whatever. Um, he is in Eddie Geller. Okay. Uh, and he made he made an awesome platoon of like really really solid stand up guys that were really really good at their jobs. Um, we did phenomenal. Uh, and U ULT is the uh, training block leading up to deployment. Um, he made some pretty good calls and some pretty solid uh, calls as a chief and was pretty well respected before deployment. Um, he definitely a family man, like really good with his family, um, and always like was real good to us guys. Um, and then I noticed a change kind of right as we got uh, in country. Um, his buddy, Steve Sneed, was the uh, chief of the platoon that we were leading, and they had a pretty significant combat deployment in East Missoula, uh, and Steve, uh, I think he received a, a silver star for some heroic stuff that he did. And it didn't make sense at the time, but I think Eddie was kind of uh, a little jealous of that. Um, and the first comment that he made to me that really kind of scared me was uh, we were at uh, the Shaycon house. Um, do you guys know kind of the, we were at, the Shaycon was the house that we staged out of. Yeah, and he made a comment about, oh, somebody's definitely gonna get like injured on this deployment, or somebody's definitely, mm -hmm. this is gonna be a, a, a crazy deployment. I didn't really think much of it, but I just kinda, kinda let it go. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, deployment kicked off, and it, uh, he got more and more aggressive as the deployment went on, um, as far as exposing guys to um, unnecessary, unnecessary threats, um, going to rooftops several times in a row. Uh, one in particular uh, that guys got, one of our guys got shot in, in the hit, and then we had to go back there uh, a couple more times. Um, he, I didn't physically, uh, I was with him in some of the sniper OPs. I didn't, I wasn't looking down the scope, so I couldn't tell you for sure. But uh, he uh, was definitely pretty happy on the trigger, the, the whole deployment. Um, and uh, he definitely exposed, myself included, uh, guys to some serious uh, enemy fire, to, I think to draw fire. Um, I got the second month of deployment, or the third month, I was in a uh, Matt V that he and his crew were in. Um, and uh, they got out to go to a um, a sniper uh, OP that he had selected, and the vehicle was left unattended. And this is not secret tactic. This is just tactics 101. Facing enemy vehicle unattended, you get in the damn vehicle and you man the gun. I man the gun um, and saw some sketchy stuff on a rooftop. Uh, about 300 meters, 400 meters in front of us, but our partner force was underneath. We called the Turk and the uh, partner force captain or colonel, and before I know it, uh, SPG-9 anti-tank rocket um, ripped in, hit the uh, bottom of the vehicle, hit the door, exploded into the cab. The Turk fell on top of me. Like I was knocked out on the other side of the vehicle. He had two arterial bleeds, and then this uh, this uh, Iraqi colonel or captain was literally split in two. Um, and that was pretty traumatic for me. And it took me a while to, uh, to recover from that. But the thing that was the, um, the thing about that situation that really changed my mind about Eddie was he came up to me after that and was like, hey man, like this is some serious shit. You need to put yourself in for a purple heart. And I said, you know what, the biggest prior, my priority is to make sure this turf's okay and uh, just go on with the rest of the deployment. And he really pushed for me to, to put myself in for it, which I didn't, which I believe him and Jake did. Um, and then I find out, he goes to the platoon and says, I'm full of shit and I never got knocked out and it wasn't as bad as it was, but 
I mean, that was like the first like kind of betrayal that I felt from him uh, personally. Um, there is another instance, which I'm sure you guys have heard about, with a guy named Josh Friends that was in a Matt V um, that you had to drive out to draw like enemy rockets. Um, yeah, I, I, it, he just kept pushing the envelope and pushing the envelope. Um, and guys started to stand up to him like halfway through deployment. Like, this is, this is freaking wrong. Um, and he just started benching guys left and right. Um, like senior guys and he started taking new guys to OPs with him and I knew the how bad this deployment was going um, as far as guys getting exposed to enemy fire if I didn't play his game and if I actually stood up to him um, like the other guys were saying hey no this is stupid let's not do this off or let's not do that that's what I mean by standing up to him um, I would I would be what he called a mm -hmm. pussy um, and then put in in the back of the train, and I couldn't do that to to my guys because mm -hmm. um, we needed medics out there um, to to provide for these guys. Um, and then I'm sure the uh, the incident with with Eddie um, and the uh, the in injured uh, enemy um, was uh, was definitely. A uh, rough, rough thing to deal with uh, for all of us, and I keep circling back in my mind, like why wasn't Jake, like why didn't he do more? And we routed it through Jake, and then when we got home, we expected it to go somewhere, and it was told to us it was going so somewhere, and then it was told to us uh, we just kind of uh, leaned on Craig to make the right decisions, and then it was told to us that. Eddie was going to get removed from MSW, um, and he was going to get, this guy needs m mental help. Uh, and it was told to us that this would happen, and it, it, it didn't. Um, uh, and I was petrified because here this guy is about to sabotage my chance to go to Green Team. <laughs> and I don't know, like, all this stress, and not only trauma from my injuries, but trauma from his bullshit from deployment and then guys are like he just put like daggers in uh, everywhere he went um yeah I, that's that's just kind of like the general uh some general things about him uh on deployment uh i was definitely uh in the sniper ops more often than not towards the end of the, the first part of the deployment i mostly flew the puma and then as stuff got started getting hairier i tried to get closer so i could be there in case somebody mm -hmm. somebody got badly injured um so yeah that's that's pretty much uh the general consensus of of him and his personality my biggest fear is that he like i'm afraid for like craig's family even like my family i know we're over here mm -hmm. but like after seeing like some of the shit he did on the planet like i don't i don't know what to expect anymore yeah. And then using like green team, I mean, he, he didn't tell me specifically, like when I talked to him after deployment, as I sat down with him after deployment, I was like, hey man, like this is X, Y, and Z, and this is why I'm mad at you from deployment. And he just systematically tried to prove me wrong on everything. So I shook his hand, I was like, all right, fine. Um, and uh, just, I tried to placate him as much as I could to not jeopardize my chance to go, to come out here to green team. But I did have faith. Mm -hmm. in the system that uh, that we were going to do something and it took long enough but it, it did happen but you got to understand like this is also like an incredibly unpopular thing to do mm -hmm. in our community but when it's just one individual and your OIC won't stand up and do something I mean Jake's a good guy like more like I I I, I, I did look up to Jake and I, I do like Jake as a person I just Feel like Jake had a responsibility to uh, to do more, yeah. for sure. Um, so, do you guys want specifics on? Yeah, I'll follow up just a little bit on that. Um, okay. So, in regards to like when he sent um, people out to draw and fire. Um, 
was that a regular reoccurring thing? I would say so, yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, is that something that you guys thought was like a general consensus? Everybody thought that should not be happening? Yeah, there's a guy on our team named Joe Harrington that wrote a, uh, he wrote a, uh, he either wrote a text on the country phone or, or told our uh, J.O. Uh, timing, you know, like, somebody's gonna get killed, like, this, this guy's, like, fucked up, and Eddie somehow, like, got it before Tommy got it, um, and tried to remove Joe from the platoon and, like, send him to a different site, um, and the whole platoon just kind of got together and was like, no, like, you can't, you can't do this, but towards the end of the point, you started seeing, like, Eddie take new guys, like, even towards the very end of the point, he started pushing me away, um, and when you, the types of OPs that we were in, like, there shouldn't have been, there should have been some older guys up there, so, um, and we had, like, really good older guys, like, our snipers were very, um, deliberate, and, and they followed the ROEs very deliberately, I mean, Dalton Tolbert is about as straight as you can get, uh, Dylan DeLay, amazing guy, uh, Josh Friends, Chris Shoemake, like, they're, I sat in the cypher hides with them, and they were very, very decisive on what they shot at, who they shot at, did they have a gun, did they not have a gun, um, should I shoot a warning shot, should, I mean, it, they were just, that's kind of like what I expected, is this was my first time in combat, um, but with Eddie, it was just like, um, I mean, the gun just never stopped shooting. So I don't know if he was shooting it. Uh, I mean, maybe he wasn't even hitting I mean, I'm assuming he was because he was shooting so much. But the dude, I don't know, I just really, uh, I was just scratched out of the point. Like, he kind of, like, this guy was our, like, he was our buzz instructor, too. Like, he was the guy in buds, like, that everybody looked up to. And then... Uh, I, went, I went away to SQT in, in, in medic school and I came back and uh, Eddie was on team seven and I just, I, I expected like a lot more to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, do you, what do you think his purpose of sending guys out to draw fire or was? I mean, what do you think that was about? Oh, so he could shoot, he could shoot, he could find the enemy and shoot, shoot back because Urban combat's tough. Mm -hmm. um, you hardly ever, ever see the enemy, but they're there and they're very fucking close. Um, and when those rounds start snapping over your head, it's hey, it scares the shit out of you. Um, I mean, the rooftop that that uh, John uh, my dragon he's kind of got a weird name, but we call him Dragon. He's our UD guy. The rooftop he got shot on. Um, I wasn't up there that day. Uh, but I assisted with the uh, with his treatments, and then we went back to uh, that rooftop like a couple days later. And I'm like, "What the fuck are we doing up on this rooftop?" Uh, and sure shit, like come two o'clock, rounds started ripping into the stairwell. Our only egress. We have all this wep all these weapons and equipment up there, and we're all looking at Eddie like, "What were we gonna do?" Um, Thank goodness I had a smoke in my med bag down on the second deck. We radioed down and had uh, one of the guys throw a smoke out, and then we uh, returned fire um, and then got off got off the, the rooftop. But, I mean, you don't go to the same freaking spot multiple times in an urban environment. Mm -hmm. It's just, but if I said something, or if we say something to them, like, then and that's it. So it's like, it was pretty freaking intimidating, the whole deployment, because you care so much about the guys. Um, and I think a lot of guys struggled with that, mm -hmm. including all the way up from Craig down to the new guys. Um, so that's... So how many times had you guys been there prior to this when he got shot? Dragon? Yeah. Um, I only went up there once. Um, I know that they had gone up there at least two, at least one time before Dragon got shot. Um, and then Eddie wanted to go back after we got shot up there. And we all said no. Um, okay. So, 
So should you have been there whenever he got shot? Dragon? Mm -hmm. I wish I was there. No, I mean, should the team have been there in the first place? In that, in that OP? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I don't think so. I think we could have found better uh, OPs. I mean, I'd, what are you there for the end of the day? You're there to enable mm -hmm. the partner force to clear through the city. That's, that's our job. Were there other available spots or locations? I'm not a sniper, mm -hmm. and I can't intelligently answer that question. Okay. Um, but, I mean, it's a city, so yeah. I'm, I'm sure, but I'm not. Uh, that would be more of a question to ask as a sniper. Okay. Um, do you have any insight on what his possible motives for putting the team in danger all the time was? I don't know. I think I, if we go back to that first comment that he made, like, Maybe it made deployment more real for him. I don't know. Somebody got shot or somebody got hit. I mean, he got his wish. Like, I almost got killed. Uh, and Dragon got shot. The Turp got two arterial bleeds. Um, there's tons of close calls. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, everybody, I mean, everybody's feeling pretty similar. Yeah. So, um, I'm just glad that it's like, it's hard because like, it's our community, and mm -hmm. I love this community, and we want to take care of the community, but when you have one incredibly bad egg, you just, mm -hmm. but what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I understand. Um, the interpreter, you remember his name? Yeah, uh, we call him Doy, but his mm -hmm. name is Lathe. Lathe? Lathe, yeah. He's in Iraq right now, I think. Last time we heard, he was uh, recovering uh, in Baghdad. Um, it, so he had, so basically, I mean, do you guys want to know the details of that day? Or? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, I got blown up, came to. Um, I thought we had gotten hit by, um, we had gotten hit with mortars a couple days earlier that were um, trying not to, to divulge any information that I might not be able to. Uh, I guess it was no it was no secret that ISIS was using or trying to uh, use chemical weapons mm -hmm. in Missoula. Um and a few days earlier we were uh, in a in an OP um, and they hit us with uh, they tried like mustard. Um, uh, I recognized it and then we got the guys out. Um, we went through the whole decontamination process. It was like all stop for a day or whatever, and, and then we went back out. So I, I thought originally, because I'd never been hit by like a recoil or a slot rocket, but I had never been hit by anything like that. I mean, shot at, but not hit. hit. Um, so I thought it was mustard. So I came to, ran out of the vehicle, run up the street, um, and then I like turned around and ran back to the, there it was a four-way intersection, and like took a knee, and apparently was standing, staring out in the space. And then uh, Mike Stoner, hit me over the helmet and was like, hey dude, the turps bleeding out, you need to go treat him. And it was like, adrenaline set in, grabbed my med bag, went over, uh, treated him for like 30, 30 minutes. We got him, we got him, I guess we started receiving fire uh, during that time. They shot another rocket and they were shooting um, uh, what we believe were 50 cal um, uh, sniper rounds because our vehicle, um, vehicles were impacted again. Um, and, um, we got him to a primary HLZ. The um, somebody back uh, in Baghdad called off the the helos, so we had to load this guy on the hood of the vehicle and take him. Which they said were f four blocks. We ended up taking him like a mile away, um, and then the, the helos finally came in. And here I am, like treating this dude on the hood, out of my freaking mind. Um, got him on the helo. He ended up surviving. And then Eddie comes by. I think I think he had like a lollipop in his mouth. Like strolls over and is like, "Can you like re reset your med bag?" And I looked at him like, Are you "Fucking kidding? Yeah, sure, I'll do it." And he's like, "All right, we're going back in. We're going back in the city." And the vehicle was disabled, and we ended up we ended up getting called back. So I was kind of relieved, and it took a while to to kind of recover from that. But yeah, he just wanted to like turn around and go back back in the city. Um, yeah, 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 any other? No. Um, so his name is Lath. Um, do you remember how to spell it? 
L A I D H. Okay. And Doy is that like a last name or is that just Doy what is like him? his his nickname okay. that uh, he he was called. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Um, who did he actually work for? Like, how was how was he a turf? So they, all the turfs worked for a company called ABM. Um, ABM. ABM. And uh, yeah, he he worked for for that company. Okay. They were one of our interpreters. Okay. Um, do you have? You said that you had contact with him. How was that? Like when you guys found out that uh, he was in Baghdad? Through the other, like his buddies okay. at the, at the, uh, at without our spot. I mean, all the chirps like knew each other. It was like okay. chirp network or whatever. Okay. Um, do you guys have any contact information for any of those guys or know where they know how to get a hold of them? Uh, I'm sure they can call ABM, get, okay. get in touch with them. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Um, so going on from the tactics portion or, you know, the setup, um, just go into the events that you remember or that you know about uh, in regards to that, Eddie. Okay. I mean, the, the specific events that, mm -hmm. that stand out in my mind um, was m my vehicle getting hit with a rocket, mm -hmm. um, Josh Friends driving a vehicle out to get unnecessarily exposed, um, Dragon. Mon, sorry, I call him Dragon, but mm -hmm. it's John or Mon Dragon is his last name. Getting hit on the rooftop and the no fee that they probably shouldn't have, have gone back to. Mm -hmm. um, the instance with the um, uh, the ISIS the wounded uh, mm -hmm. ISIS dude, um, and then Eddie just going crazy on not going crazy, but. I don't think he was very, um, I don't think he, he really picked his shots very well from what it seemed like. Can you go into the um, incident with the ISIS fighter? Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, it was shortly after um, my injury and we moved up to, to the deer shop. I'm going to try to get just, I'm going to exactly what I remember um, that guy uh, was in a we started that morning off at, at this compound um, pretty much the whole day was, was spent there um, there was a heavy concentration of ISIS fighters on the north end of the city um, mm -hmm. they were shooting back and the partner force was getting getting it pretty good um, and I believe we hit one of the compounds with a, uh, with a hellfire or some type of Big type of ordinance, and uh, the uh, they came over the radio that there was a like a wounded uh, ISIS guy, and um, I, I came over the radio. I said, "Hey, we got a, a wounded ISIS guy." And I, I can't remember exactly what Eddie said, but he said something along the lines like, "He's mine," or "or I got it," or whatever. And I thought it was kind of weird. Um, we got down <coughs> to the, the ground level. And this guy was like splayed out on the hood, had a pre bed laceration on his leg, but he was, he looked like he was near death. Um, mm -hmm. And he, uh, I guess, got him off the hood. Um, I think he, or I'm trying to remember, definitely, you know, the part of says he's definitely an ISIS guy. Um, and we thought without a doubt he was too from this, this compound that was hit. Um, Corey Scott, myself, and Eddie, um, and Ivan Villanueva were, uh, were all there treating him. Um, it, it appeared like he had a uh, very, very hard trouble breathing in and out, in and out. Um, definitely suspected uh, hemothorax um, or some type of that or made blast line um it was it went out that we had to uh to treat this guy which was tough he was, he was a nice prisoner um he was given uh needle d's ch uh, chest tube on the left side which seemed to in improve uh, his breathing a little bit um eddie did a uh crike or trachiostomy um not very well but i uh assisted uh, after he had made all the cuts um, 
and then Corey and Eddie were kind of pretty much uh, on him. Uh, Dylan Weber was helping out, um, and I thought we were going to probably load and go. Uh, or the Iraqis were. I knew he wasn't going back to our, our spot or whatever. Um, so I went and got my, my sunglasses were up in the OP um, from prior to him coming out. Went to get my sunglasses, um, came back, and uh, the guy was was not alive. Um, was kind of confused of, as to what happened, but we were told to, to stay put for the rest of the day, and uh, it just was got awkward. I mean, here's this <coughs> here's this guy. Um, mm -hmm. The Iraqis brought out a meat cleaver, and they were like wanting to cut him up or whatever, and he said no. So I was thinking maybe the Iraqis did something, but nobody really talked about it um, until we got back that night. And uh, it, it, as the day rolled on, it was like, the guys got more and more desensitized to this. I mean, here we are, we should try to save this guy. And then he died. Um, so I think the majority of the platoon was, was, was definitely confused uh, on what happened. And then uh, I believe, I'm a, it's kind of hazy, but I believe Eddie and Jake did like a, a re-enlistment like, thing right next to the body. Um, and it was just a weird situation for, for everybody. And everybody felt very, very like uncomfortable that night. And we got, Craig got us together and we kind of discussed like, what the fuck, what the fuck happened? Um, and that was one of the instances that, uh, we knew that like, this is kind of wasn't right. Um, at the end of the day, like it, it was wrong. Um, mm -hmm. and then on top of everything else that he did out there, mm -hmm. like some of the stuff just doesn't go. Like, I know it was emotional for everybody, mm -hmm. but I mean, fucking court. Sorry, excuse my language. No, Corey told me, or Cor guys told us when we got back that night, like it was freaking Eddie that could kill that dude. Um, just, I don't know. Uh, there's not much else to say. Did they? Did they specify how he killed him? Uh, yeah. Corey said, I think he used a knife. Um, so. Did he tell you what he did? Uh, he, I'm assuming he stabbed him. Okay. Did he say where? Um, I noticed when I came down, there was like, on one of the si opposite, opposite side of the chest tube, there was a, there, it's like pretty hazy. I, I noticed there was um, definitely like, it looked like somebody had been treating that side for some type of trauma. Um, okay. But I, 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 specifically like, Mm -hmm. That day, it just was not a good day mm -hmm. for anybody. Um, you could tell that it was being treated for trauma. But what was there that made you think it was being treated by trauma or for trauma? What do you mean? Like, what what did you see um, that made you think that it was being treated? I can't, I I can't specifically remember. So this would be just trying to go back. And, I just got that feeling when I when I came down. So I thought maybe the Iraqis had done something, mm -hmm. or because the guy was like alive when I left. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think there was like some gauze, maybe, and uh, some like chest seals around it. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't remember specifically. When you left to get your sunglasses, was that there? Was that there before you left to get your sunglasses? No. No. Um, Did you see blood? Uh, I don't remember there being a lot of blood, okay. um, but I don't specifically, I can't, I don't remember. Okay. Did uh, you see any injuries or anything that stood out to you above that? Up like to his head or something? Mm -hmm. No. Um, the crike was, uh, it was a good crike. Uh, and then it was, uh, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, Not that I, I mean, I wasn't, yeah. No. Okay. Um, the crike, uh, can you explain how he did that? What he used to do that with? Uh, I think he used a, a crike kit. Um, it's all it's all kind of a blur. Okay. But uh, 
but yeah, I, I think you, you did use a, a great kit. Okay, um, can you explain what's in the kit? Um, yeah, it's just a, a Craig and thyroid, thyroid uh, tube, and then um, things to, to, to um, basically fasten it, and then there's a scalpel in there. Okay. Um, did you see him use the scalpel when he put the kit in? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Would there have been any legitimate reason to use anything else? other than the scalpel that came with the kit? Any legitimate reason to use anything other than the scalpel when, when doing the cryo? That's or? correct. Okay. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, Seth, like I'm, I'm trying hard, man. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember if you used anything besides the scalpel. Okay. Um, that but, was pretty... So, as a medic, can you are there any legitimate reasons that you can think of to do the cry kit with anything other than the scalpel? Like to do the actual cut? Uh no, I mean if you have a scalpel, it's probably better to I mean, you could use I mean you could if you have a, a knife that's sharp enough. Yeah, I mean whatever whatever you can do as expeditiously as possible to get it in, that that's what you do. Um but yeah, I mean, I think I would use a scalpel. Okay. Um, so after you came back and you saw that the guy was dead, um, how could you tell that he was dead? Uh, he just wasn't moving, and everybody had kind of like scattered mm -hmm. from from where he was. Okay. Um, did you see him breathing or moving? Nothing like that. No, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Um, when the I or when the Iraqis came over, you said they took out a meat cleaver. One of the Iraqis had one. Okay. Can you describe what that is? Like, what did it look like? Uh, it was just like a long. It looked like something you see in a cartoon. You know, like a long knife with a with a handle on it. Okay. Um, did you see where he got it from? The Iraqi? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I didn't. Okay. Who did he ask? Um, whatever question he asked you. Um, he he just like had it. I think he was like joking with it, like to cut up the body. I I honestly like after that like I was so mm -hmm. it was just something like I didn't want to be a part of type deal. Yeah. Um, who was he? Do you, do you remember who he was talking to whenever he asked that question? I would assume Eddie, um, but I I couldn't tell you. Okay. And do you remember what he asked? What he? No, I don't. I don't remember. Okay. So you didn't actually hear the question that he asked? No, I mean it was talked about that a lot of this was talked about this that night amongst okay. the guys. So okay. this is like kind of all okay. coming together. Okay. Um. So going to the reenlistment, um, how did they set that up, I guess? Who set that up? I think it was Jake and Eddie. Okay. Um, did they kind of bring everybody in to do it? Yeah, it was super awkward to okay. do it. So. Um, and did he actually do the reenlistment there next to the body? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. And it was Eddie's reenlistment? Yeah, it was. Okay. And who? From what, from what I remember. Okay. And who actually administered the reenlistment? Jake. Jake did. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else you can remember significant that happened um, during the reenlistment? No, there's not. Okay. Um, do you remember them taking a picture at the reenlistment? Um. Yeah, guys were. There's definitely some like posing and stuff like that, but it was more like I think guys were intimidated by Eddie, yeah. and everything. I mean, for obvious reasons. Yeah, true. So I think we're kind of playing along to figure out what to do. I don't, I don't think you guys understand like how crazy this guy is. Like, guys were definitely. I mean, 
didn't freaking trust him. Like, he just, who knows what he, like, what he's capable of. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I think just exposing guys to enemy fire, to draw fire, says it all right there. Yeah. It's, uh, Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I still do. Do you believe that the uh, guys back in San Diego were at, at risk from him? Yeah, I do. I think their families are. Um, fuck. I mean, I. I mean, were you like up here? You know. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't think he'd come out here, but. Yeah. I mean, and the fact like this whole green team thing, like he's there. Like, it's as psychotic as he is. Like calling. I mean, this is hearsay, obviously, mm -hmm. but he told Craig Miller to call the cadre, and so I'm like on pins and needles here mm -hmm. in Virginia. Your selection for the unit you're trying out for, you can be not selected for any reason, correct? Yeah, I mean, it could be like Sunday. A guy, I, we have to do uh, 80 perfect push-ups, and they could just sit down and say, hey, no rep, no rep, no rep, and that'd be it. I'd be done. Like PCS out here, try to move on the best I could from like all the, like I literally try to compartmentalize deployment and then just forget, like data dump, all of it, just because I wanted to move on. I wanted to do to do well out here. And when you see that much freaking combat, like, I just, I'm not saying I have PTSD by any, by any means. You know. I just, I, don't know, I wanted to go come out here and, and, and do something different because I knew that Eddie, everybody had a bad taste in their mouth about what happened on deployment. So, yeah, it's just, it just kind of goes back to our conversation mm -hmm. over the weekend. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know how far his reach spans. I know he's got a lot of best friends that are out at the end there. So... Um, let's go into some of the other instances with Eddie um, on the deployment. Sure. Um, I'll just I'll just be specific. Yeah, I'm gonna be so. I'm gonna be. As, I'm just gonna let you know, like if I remember this okay. fact or if it's is okay. like my memory. Like deployment's been it's been pretty rough. Yeah. Um, so going forward, um, do you remember instances where uh, there were other people? Uh, that you either saw or heard of any killing on deployment that were not ISIS fighters? Oh, like behind a sniper rifle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was talked about all the time that he was shooting people that weren't supposed to be weren't supposed to be shot. But the only per the only people that can confirm that are mm -hmm. uh, other snipers that were on the scope with him. Do you know who? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you who our snipers are. Uh, Dylan Delay. Uh, Dalton Tolbert, um, Chris Shumay, um, did I say Josh Friends? And Josh, Josh Friends. Um, those are our, uh, our and, uh, oh yeah, I said Dylan Delay. I think those are our four, four main snipers. Okay. So, um, did you ever see him shoot anybody that he shouldn't have shot? Uh, no, I, 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 not not personally, but I, it was weird though because I was there, mm -hmm. um, like next next to all the snipers, I was providing medical. I was I was a med medic, mm -hmm. um, so like I heard talk about it, okay. but I didn't. I mean, I wish I could help you out more there, but I didn't actually see him shoot uh, other people. Okay. Um, were you ever with him whenever he did, and you heard that he had done that? Uh, yeah, when we were on the east side, one time in particular, I can remember when we were. I don't know if this was an enemy combatant or not. That's mm -hmm. that's that's the tough the tough mm -hmm. thing. Uh, one time when we were on the east side of Missoula, we were set up on the river, and uh, he shot a rocket at this dude, and I guess like he, he like fell out from behind this wall, and then Eddie um, shot shot at him. I, I believe with his, I believe with his sniper rifle. Like shot it, shot again at him, and then said like, "Oh yeah, I got him." And he would like always say like, "Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him," but I never. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't personally. Um, I wasn't looking down the scope mm -hmm. at all. Can you tell me instances you remember hearing about um, with him shooting civilians? Uh, instances, yeah. I, uh, a lot a lot of time when we were on the east side, the snipers would come back and they'd be talking about it. But I don't have any. Um, just, that's kind of all. Do you remember anything in particular? Like any people in particular or any stories in particular that stand out to you? Um, I mean, maybe if you had, if you like bring up a specific, I can see if I remember it, but I don't have. Okay. I didn't like load. You gotta understand, like I've dumped like a lot of this stuff just because. I, just, okay. I trusted in the system. I trusted the right thing would happen, and and it's looking like it, it did. So. Okay. Do you remember an instance where he shot a uh, older man as he was walking on the road? You know where it was. Um, I think it was from the two towers in Mosul. The two towers. Yeah, by the carnival. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't with him that day. He separated us some of the days. Do you remember hearing about that story? About him shooting an old man. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, it was talk. There's a lot of talk every night. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm That's trying okay. to help. Do you remember hearing an instance where he shot a uh, young girl as she was walking by the river? Uh, I heard an instance where he shot a girl by the river. Okay. Um, but I know it was a young girl. Okay. Do you have any details about that or what you remember hearing about it? It was that, that OP that uh, I believe if we're talking about the same situation, it was an OP that we were in um, right across the river. Uh, Yeah, I, I don't, I don't have the specific details okay. on that. Were you there that day? Um, I believe, yeah. I, if it's the same thing that we're talking about, I believe it was. Okay. Do you know who did see it? Probably one of the other snipers. Okay. Um, maybe. Yeah, we went. I went on 90 straight. I think at the end of the 90 straight combat ops, mm -hmm. 90 days in a row. So. I don't remember the specific, the specific, the specific days. Okay. Um, um, do you remember an instance uh, involving a uh, Carl Gustav round and several civilians? I think it, the the Carl G round was one I was just talking about with the guy that like okay. fell out from behind the the building. Okay. And then he followed up with a sniper. And I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a sniper rifle after that. Okay. Um, but I don't know if that was like a combatant yeah. or not, because like a lot of times these, you gotta understand like over there like it wasn't clear like who was ISIS and who wasn't. Like mm -hmm. kids were fucking shooting, women were shooting, like it was just it was chaos. Um, mm -hmm. They were. ISIS would be running away from them, or sorry, they would be running towards us from ISIS, and ISIS would just be shooting them all in the backs. Like, I mean, it's, it was probably one of the most devastating um, urban combat battles like of our time, you know, especially West Missoula, because ISIS was just absolutely ruthless. I mean, they're like hanging people from. Uh, from light posts. I mean, they were just doing some pretty horrible stuff, and they like came in all shapes and sizes. They were Americans, Chinese, like uh, African Americans, French people. Like it was like a melting pot. And, like ISIS guys were from big beards to kid people. Guys that look like Iraqis or look like kids that were like, totally capable. And it was definitely a a tough, tough uh, environment to mm -hmm. to navigate, but I think we did the best that we possibly could. Um, at least the guys did. Mm -hmm. So I remember certain instances where, like, I was in, 
I got to get behind the gun one time um, with Dalton, Tolbert, and uh, Dylan DeLay. As I was sitting in the, the uh, sniper hide with them, and the guy walked down to the water, and they're like, okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to shoot. Was, they were getting water to take back up to the rack. He's like, you're going to shoot a couple yards to the right of them. Um, I just remember thinking back in my head, I was like, this is not what Eddie would do, but this is the right thing to do. So, yeah, I shot a couple of yards to the right of him, dropped his water jug, ran back up to uh, into the village. And, like, I kind of felt good about that at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's another instance where I, I got to get on the sniper ri- rifle, and there was a kid that kept coming out to uh, fill up this water jug, uh, or fill up water jugs out of this big, like, blue cylinder-type trash can. Um, and he was filling up, to, his ice didn't have water towards the end of the deployment, and we were like kind of on the backside of, uh, of Old Mazul, um, trying to disrupt that um, as much as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember I, I waited for the kid to go back inside, and I shot the blue thing, and it exploded, and the kid came out and like looked devastated, but I felt like pretty freaking good about it. And I felt like, yeah, that's like, that's what, that's the right thing to do. I think a lot of the guys in the platoon, mm-hmm. which I know a lot of the guys in the platoon are the same way. So, do you remember instances where Eddie was firing warning or people were firing warning shots um, because of Eddie? Oh my gosh, I I haven't heard of instances like that, but I wouldn't put it past like the snipers in our platoon. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. I bet you, Josh friends did it. I bet you Dalton Tolbert did it. I bet you shoot. I bet you they all did it. To, yeah, from how bad it was, like they described it. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure they did it. So. Mm-hmm. And do you remember hearing about it? Um, probably. Okay. But as I said before, like it's been. It's, I wish I. I really want to like say yes, but I, I just, I can't. I mean, I don't, I don't know for sure. You okay. Know? Um, do you remember any instances where uh, they were doing anything with his rifle so he wouldn't kill civilians? I remember Eddie's rifle broke, and on deployment, oh, he was pretty pissed about it. Um, okay. Do you remember how it broke? Or what was wrong with it? Yeah, it wouldn't rack. I don't know, Cyber, I don't know the details. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah. He couldn't eject around. Yeah, that's it. He couldn't either he couldn't eject around or he couldn't see around. His bolt was it was almost like it was the wrong bolt. Mm-hmm. I, I remember Eddie being like pissed that day because his his gun wouldn't work. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Do you remember what gun he used most of the time? Yeah, it was a 301 mag. It was, uh, oh, that's another sniper, uh, Joe Arrington. He's a JTAC as well. Uh, yeah, I think he used Joe's gun mostly. Okay. His, they had to share sniper, sniper rifles. Okay. Um, do you remember any other in- instances with the Carl G rounds? Yeah, they were shot way too many of them. Okay. Tell me about that. I mean, Eddie, Eddie would triangulate where the where um, the ISIS guys were, or like how to affect. Because we were, we were literally getting shot back at a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. our platoon was drying a lot of fire. So uh, I just think that um, the Carl G rounds uh, got a little excessive, just from a medical standpoint. I mean, being the same OP and having like 10 Carl G rounds, I mean, why not just call in an airstrike, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like why shoot 10 Carl Gs to try to affect the target you just drop a bomb on? But as that is strictly like my opinion and um, mm-hmm. I had zero combat experience before that deployment. So I, rem- I wrote up SF-600s for all our guys mm-hmm. for getting exposed to, to Carl G rounds. And then when I went through my, br- like when I went back to Balboa and started getting treated I went and saw somebody for, um, like I was forgetting my keys everywhere. I was getting in massive arguments with my wife. Um, I felt pretty aggressive when I got home. I was like not remembering stuff. 
um, like I knew it was a problem and we pushed hard through medical to get all the guys seen um, and then we had I think it's I think our deployment is what brought the new NSW uh, TBI protocol up um, because you're not supposed to be exposed to that many rockets in, mm -hmm. in, but it's war I mean it happens so like I'm not judging I don't know if, if that's standard. I think shooting them in, from inside structures is pretty stupid, but like that's war, and that's that's how it, that's how it happens. So. Okay. Um, Do you ever remember a time period where um, that stopped, or where it decreased? Um, Um, so from Eddie, are there any other instances you can think of where he killed a civilian? No. Okay. I mean, not. Okay. Or you, anything you remember hearing about or anything like that other than the things we talked about? Um, no. Not, for, not particularly. Okay. Um, we've got a few more things we can visit. Anything you want to follow up on? Um... going back to the ISIS fighter. Um, when did, I'm not sure if I wrote it down, but when did you learn uh, what had happened? Uh, at that night, it was pretty clear. Like, we kind of had, like, some guesses, but it wasn't really discussed. Um, it really wasn't. I, mean, I think guys are pretty kind of shaken up about it. Do you recall someone specifically saying, I saw Eddie? I know Corey Scott definitely saw him. And I think Ivan Villanueva saw him do it too. Uh, so. Do you remember um, about an age of the guy? Or a person, whoever it was. Um, not particularly. No, I mean, it definitely like in the twenties, probably. Okay. Do you remember what they were wearing? Um, some like freeze maybe, free pants, some type of shirt. Okay. Um, so from there, um. Obviously, this is where the, the other thing comes in. Um, do you remember there being a photograph that um, you had access to of that reenlistment ceremony? Um, there, were, we had our uh, our laptop, but I don't. I didn't specifically see photos of the actual. They were all um, pretty much gone by the time we got back to. Uh, the base, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Did they get deleted? Yeah, maybe. Um, so, okay. I would assume. Okay. Um, but I don't even know. I, I don't know too much about the, uh, I can't remember too much about the exact uh, photos. Okay. I think, I think everybody was just pretty, um, kind of like in zombie mode almost. Okay. And I don't think people really knew how to react to, the, to that whole mm -hmm. situation. But I think they were pretty afraid of, of Eddie. Mm -hmm. I think everybody kind of knew. Uh, but nobody knew for sure. Okay. Um, do you remember that uh, picture? Or you having access to that picture? Me having access? Mm -hmm. Like it being on your computer? Maybe. I, I, didn't, I didn't. The computer's back at, at the base, so I'm not. 100%. Okay. Was that your personal computer? It was, but it was used by the, the whole platoon okay. for uh, um, to make the, the platoon video. Okay. Is there stuff on that computer, what, or did you know everything was on that computer? No, absolutely. Did you can control what was put on that computer? No. Did you have a password on the computer? No. Okay. Did you have different 
user profiles for people that would use computer. Yeah. yeah. It was an open computer. Yeah. Okay. Was there a password for the computer? Yeah. No. It was just open? Yeah. Okay. Um, was it an Alienware computer? Uh, yeah, it was. Okay. Do you want a model? No. No. Okay. What color is it? Uh, red. It's red? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it have the little alien head on it? It does. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, or best your knowledge, where is it? Uh, it's, it's here in, in Virginia. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, is there, do you remember anybody having a, um, like what they took the pictures with or like a camera or anything like that um, being out there? No, specifically. Okay. Remember. Do you remember anybody having GoPros or anything like that? Uh, most of the platoon did have. Um, a lot of guys that have GoPros and stuff out there. Okay. Do you remember in particular a meeting um, that was recorded with a GoPro? No. I mean, I remember uh, we had a platoon prayer in the beginning of the that was recorded with a GoPro, but no, I don't. Um, what about a confrontational meeting with Eddie? No, I, I don't know about that. Um, were you ever in a meeting uh, that was confrontational in nature with Eddie about him killing civilians? There's a lot of meetings. Yeah. A lot. Um, a lot of like platoon getting together, even without Eddie, discussing the issues with Eddie. Um, I don't remember specifically. Um, maybe, maybe Craig would know better than, than me about something like that. Um, okay. I know Craig was um, I, 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 I love Craig. I definitely look up to him big time. He's definitely the one that kind of helped us out a lot. We okay. made some pretty unpopular decisions in an unpopular time, but he's kind of been well done a good job in, of keeping us in the loop. So, do you think they were the right decisions that Craig made? Yeah, I think. I mean, you're always told to use your chain, utilize your chain of command. We utilized Craig, Craig mm -hmm. utilized um, Jake, and then I don't know what happened after that, but I know that it was when we got back, like it wasn't put, swept aside, and then. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Lieutenant Commander Bryce found out about it um, just from hearsay and then the last thing I heard was Eddie was going to get removed from the Navy and get some serious help and then um, Craig called me a couple weeks ago and was like hey like, we're going to continue to push this are you, are you on board? I said yeah absolutely um, it's just it's hard for me to be because where I am yep. and you understand if I'm um, out front mm -hmm. exposed like that's green team's done for me in Dalton because mm -hmm. people don't know all the facts and all the details and it's gonna, it's gonna look at like we're basically giving up our cheat you know what I mean yeah um, our community is weird like that nobody nobody's yeah I I don't know. I just, but yeah, I was on board with with Craig. Okay. Do you how many how many times can you remember? Um, I know you probably can't give specifics, but do you remember instances where Craig was reporting it up? Um, when we got back. Um, either. Uh, I think Craig. No, I mean. Can we take a break? Hmm? Um, so there's just a few things I want to go over and clarify real quick and see if you can remember. Um, was Eddie on this deployment? Was he a medic? Yeah, he was the most had most deployments. Okay. 
As a as, as a medic. medic, yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything that you can remember in particular about him carrying um, a medic pouch on him or kit on him? Um, he was supposed to, but he would go out of uh, other guys. Everybody had like a med bag, so he would go out of other okay. people's okay. other people's bags. He had a med bag. Okay. Is there another is there another term for that? A med bag? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I see what you're saying. There's a blowout kit that okay. each guy mm -hmm. has. Uh, so uh, I actually made the blowout kits for the platoon. Mm -hmm. There's one. Um, it, well, now they're they're standardized. Um, uh, they're made by a company called Focus uh, out of California, um, but had everybody carry a uh, blowout kit under their plates, and then one uh, like a they could either fasten it to the back of their kit or carry it uh, on their their back of their belt. And it was essentially one on your back is for you to um, for your buddy to work mm -hmm. on you, and then the one under your plates is for uh, for you to work on yourself or for you to work on your buddy. Um, so yeah, he was supposed to have him. Did he carry it? Uh, to my knowledge, yeah, he should have had it. Um, okay. I had 90 straight days, yeah. and maybe some days he took him, took it out, maybe some days he didn't. Okay. I know um, he assisted with uh, uh, when Dragon got shot. Um, he and Corey were the primary medics on him until, until I got him in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything in particular that he carried beside or in place of the blowout kit on his back? Um, I'm trying to think of what he said about me. Yeah, he carried a. Uh, it might have been under his blowout kit, or I know on the smallest back he always had it. He carried a knife. Okay. Um, do you remember what kind of knife it was? Uh, just. Basic knife, okay. maybe a Winkler. I don't know. Okay. That's a pretty popular brand of knife that guys carry. Was it a fixed blade or folding blade? Uh, it was fixed. Yeah. Um, did it have? Do you remember what the sheath looked like? Um. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was a leather sheath. Okay. Do you remember what color? Maybe brown. Okay. I can give you. That's okay. I'm trying, sorry. No, it's okay, no worries. Um, do you remember anything in particular about the knife, like the color of the blade or the um, the hand, like the grip or anything like that? I would just be speculating. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I couldn't even tell you the color of like my folding knife I had in my camera. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Black. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It's not something that was like a focal point, but. Um, like of the entire deployment, but uh, maybe the sheath, was, maybe the handle was green. Um, okay. I'm yeah. trying. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Um, do you remember for sure that he had it though? Yeah, I mean, he usually carried. I'm sure he carried it on most okay. stops. Okay. Um, do you remember ever seeing him with it once he got back from the San Diego? Mm -hmm. No, I mean I saw him twice since I got back. Okay. Um, no, he didn't have it. Not to, not to my knowledge. Okay. So you don't remember seeing it with him? In San Diego? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so did, with it... Did you hear... Did the guys tell you what he did to us at the end of deployment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Um, I, I can hold. Okay. Yeah, I can hold. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> When you guys were in, in Mosul and that, in that compound, and um, they brought the ISIS guy in, and when everything was said and done, you got your glasses, you came down, and you guys start to pull out. Um, what had happened to the fighter? Did anything? Uh, from my memory, uh, you just kind of stayed there for a long time, um, and we weren't allowed to pull out for a while. Okay. Um, so I think that's kind of when stuff got awkward and guys got put in some really weird positions to kind of appease Eddie. Because at that point, I mean, I don't think anybody really knew what to what to think. Um, and then I think eventually the uh, partner force uh, took him away, um, or they ended up covering him and we ended up leaving. I can't remember, but. Okay. Um, 
yeah, that's, that's kind of what I remember um, about about that. So. Okay. Um, were th was there any identifiers or anything you can remember about the compound you guys were at? Anything that stood out to you to identify that location? Um, yeah, I mean, it was on on the main MS main road going into to Missoula. Okay. Um, um, do you remember the name of that road by chance? Uh, I know that's a kind of tricky question over there, but. I mean, they were like American names mm -hmm. we had for the roads, um, but um, I don't remember the name. Um, okay. Maybe if you like told me it, I could be like, "Hey, that's okay. that's it." Um, do you remember anything around the building that you were at? Yeah, there was a wall around it. Okay. Um, there's okay. a pretty large, large structure. That's why it took me such a long time to get my uh, get my glasses. Is this a can I mark on this copy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you remember if this was the location? Yeah, it looks pretty familiar. Okay. Um, do you remember anything particular in this area? Yeah, I think our vehicles were set up, like, around in, in here. And, um, and we were pushing. Mm -hmm. This is north, right? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, the partner force was mm -hmm. pushing through here. Okay. Um, yeah, I remember because I was flying Puma that day. When uh, I'm pretty sure they started here, and they were these they were shooting back pretty mm -hmm. good. I mean, this was uh, the start of uh, basically the partner force was, from my memory, was getting mm -hmm. their, their asses handed to them in the south. We had to push back up to the north, and this was. Mm -hmm. The kickoff of of the north, um, so ISIS was 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 ready to go again. They, they were good. I mean, I don't know if guys told you guys they had some legitimate uh, weaponry to use against us. I mean, it's pretty pretty accurate snipers. And I mean, my instance alone, like I had no idea that SPG nine that shot at our vehicle was shot from a, a tripod, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty significant for these guys to be able to set up mm -hmm. on us on us like that. Um, do you remember anything particular about these buildings and these structures? Uh, no, I don't know if those, it might have been bombed out. I don't f particularly remember those structures. Okay. Um, um, do you remember anything in particular standing over here in this area? Standing? Yeah. What do you mean by standing? Like, like a structure that was really tall? Uh, no, I mean, I just, this main building, this is a building. Mm -hmm. This building was, was pretty big, and I think the snipers were set up on the front. Do you remember if anything had fallen over right here? No. Okay. No. Sorry. No, that's okay. No worries. Um, so with this building, right, and this being the road, this, is this the main road you were talking about? Uh, yeah, it looks the road. I mean, this okay. this thing, this is a micro okay. uh, of a bigger map. but. Okay. Do you remember where that road went to, from, to and from? Yeah, I mean, uh, if it's a, if it's mm -hmm. if it is the same road we're talking about, this road goes into Missoula, mm -hmm. um, and that road goes back towards uh, um, like Syria, okay. and uh, up the north, okay. the Douche Heights and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Um, so, in this picture, this is Badouche, this is Mosul. Right. Right. Yeah. So, in this compound, um, do you remember where uh, the actual body was? Uh, yeah, towards the the back. Would you mind? Can you mark it? Uh, it's like an X. Somewhere in this. Can you actually draw it? Like just mark with an X. Yeah, somewhere. Okay. Maybe like right here. Okay. Um. Okay. Can you go with him initialing this? Okay. You just initial or sign it somewhere. Just single or sign. Is there anything you want to go back over or anything? No, I just, you asked about him coming back from deployment. He left before all of this. Okay. Is there any significant reason as to why? Um, 
said it was like a family issue or something when you get home early. But we all thought it was pretty shitty that that he left us all in country to break down. I mean, that was one of my that was a pretty big and cheap reason for the guys. Yeah. Is that what you wanted to say before Seth? Yeah, was was I, was, was, okay. I think most guys were pretty uh, didn't really understand that. Okay. I mean, may, maybe he did have a legitimate reason, but nobody trusted him towards the end of the summer. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool.